Okay, I'm very excited to share with you what has happened. What has happened is that I was given a hint or a glimpse into what to do with my life. And I started to do it eight years ago. And actually, I've done aspects of what it is that I've been shown that I should do with my life. And I say shown because it comes from within. You know, and the, it seems like my imagination and what is guiding my imagination? Well, let's say it's destiny. So I'm saying right now, this is the first call. I just got done doing a musical presentation, which I've named The First Call. And this in is the first talk. And I might as well stick with that theme that the first call, the first talk, first call. See, there's a calling within. It's your imagination and you're making it up and all that. Okay, fine. But how is it being guided like that? Is it all just genetics and the... the, the the vibration of the electrical currents of consciousness is flowing through the body mind and it is doing what it can do with this particular genetic structure. Well, okay, let's just say that is. You know, during the time of the Jewish or Israelite nation, way back in the early Bible days, they had what was called the sons of the prophets. It was a group of men that were inclined to live a life of spiritual asceticism and to become a mouthpiece for this spirit that would speak through them to the nation of Israel and guide them, if they would listen, to a good life. And so all through the Bible, the, the prophets would come and share their message and the people would either respond or not. A lot of times they didn't respond and bad things would happen. So am I one of those kind of people where the spirit is calling me to talk? I think so. I think so. Do I think with confidence? Yes. During my early life of my early teen years after a spiritual experience at 15, which totally changed my life. Overnight, basically, my life changed. I experienced what was called the born-again experience. And at that time, I had met a group of people that were the Jesus people, they were called. This is way back early 70s. And I was led there inwardly to do it, to find them at the purple door. It was like the typical guidance from the Holy Spirit leading me to these people. Anyway, I experienced being born again, and it changed me. And it was a literal experience. I mean, I cried. I felt something that I'd never felt before, a, a state of elevated connection to a spiritual source. Later on, about a year and a half later, I experienced another calling that led me into a very serious, fully convicted religion, and I became a missionary or someone that ended up being a vocal piece for the religion and the Bible and what I believe to be God. That fell apart. The dark side called me. I had to I had to indulge in it, and after indulging it in a while, I realized this was not what I wanted either. But then I, did, I couldn't really go back to where I came from, so my studies led me into a more Eastern mysticism kind of research. Studied the clairvoyant program from a master teacher from the Berkeley 
Institute of Clairvoyant Training and learned a lot. And at that time, I ha began to have spiritual experiences again that were unlike anything I'd ever experienced before. So after years of all of this, and then The Course in Miracles came and various other really good books, Starseed Transmissions, Handbook to Higher Consciousness by Ken Keyes, Keyesy. All of these things just opened my mind. And then after living a full life, I got married at 35 and had kids and I had a vision that later on in my life I would return to that calling and I saw images of it when I was 15. I saw myself around 65, 67 years old and I was as wake as you could get and was a prophet. Well, I certainly haven't been living up to that for some time now. But I feel the call again. I feel the call. And it has led me to creating my new sound system with cameras and switchers and perfect sound. And maybe I can improve the video quality too. I need a, somebody that can run the switcher. Maybe I shoot it and then edit it later, whatever. That's what I'm doing now. I'm just shooting and I, I can edit this later. But soon I'm just going to be doing this every day. And there won't be time to edit. Just boom, boom, here it is. Thank you very much. So that's the first call. Now the first call was way back when. But this call now at my ripe age of <laughs> uh, that I, I hear the call I hear the call and what I'm going to do with that call is I'm going to just open my soul and let my soul speak just like I do with the music I just go from here to there and and then it leads to going to there and I go back to here and then it's like mm, go to there and you know pretty soon you know one step at a time is really what it all is and and it can be quick switching like okay my hand's going to do this one step at a time and this hand's doing one step at a time I'm going back and forth and then my mouth starts speaking and I'm, what am I talking about and then that leads to more more things so likewise all my speaking is going to be of a similar nature in that I'm just going to let it happen. Where's it going to go? All the stuff is in here. And if there is a connection, and I'm using the word if just for the moment to not be too convictive, uh, but if there is a God, if there is an intelligence way beyond our puny human intelligence, and that intelligence is able to hear, see us, and be able to poke its finger and send us a little juice. I'm totally willing to surrender to that power and let direction come. And I'm going to not judge the direction. Although a part of me says, well, yeah, of course you're going to judge. You're not going to go down this evil road over here and say a bunch of stupid stuff. So, okay, there's going to be some uh, mental control, let's say, guiding force. But I'm going to let the, the spirit guide that too. You know, uh, I sing about fear and letting all fear aside. And yet fear has its place. Because if you walk out in front of a truck and think, I'm going to be able to, you know, trust God and to keep that truck from killing me. Well, that's pretty stupid. So fear has a, a guidance factor to it. But we don't need to live in paranoia or fear either. We can live without being afraid. And fear may come up in instances and you go, okay, thank you. Thank you for directing me. But the force, the power is coming out. And it wants to speak 
It wants to speak and share to the world to have hope, to draw close to God, to draw close to a high moral standard. And that's really what we're talking about here. We're not talking about joining up with a rich elite group of pedophiles that, that like to flaunt doing that which is against the moral decency of a pure Christian God, I'll call it, for the time being. God is not a Christian. God is God. And a Christian is somebody who followed somebody like Jesus who had a high moral standard. Now, there's other men with a high moral standard of which we can draw upon, I think. Like Buddha, there was a guy that, by gosh, he was dedicated to finding the truth, and he did. So, and then there was Lao Tzu and uh, some ancient people with wisdom and connection to aspects of that intelligence that is different than other people. You know, the, the Christian people, the, the Chinese people, the Japanese people, uh, Shinto, and you know, there's so much wisdom out there. So I'm not promoting only Christianity here, and I'm not really promoting anything except everything that is good, everything that is eye-opening towards where your soul resonates with some kind of good, clean, pure force. Now, I'm not totally against the idea that there are those who are led to pick up the sword and to do something with it. Now, maybe that's a Republican idea. I don't know. But, you know, you look at the Democratic idea and it's crazy about picking up the sword or the gun and, and just trying to destroy anything that's not what it thinks is the right thing. And I'm not saying I'm a Republican either or, or a Democrat. I'm not saying I'm a Christian either. I'm just saying I'm taking the best and lining it up with my conscience and letting my conscience be my guide. And I believe that that conscience has been trained by that intelligence that is reaching through and into and wanting me to be a voice of all those people out there that are similar to me. They're not swayed to the Christian. They're not swayed to a Chinese thing. You know, they're not swayed here and there. They just want to, without a name, be right. So we shall talk again. We will talk about all sorts of things that stimulate your thinking and your soul to a, a sharing. A sharing kind of similar to a 12-step group. People share their weaknesses. The early Christian church, they shared their weaknesses and people forgave freely and loved Hey, I made a mistake. Oh, brother, okay. What do we learn from this? Oh, okay. Don't walk down that street over there because it it had a lot of raucous kind of voices so uh, that led you to temptations, that led you to doing things that were against your conscience. So walk down this path over here, and then you can avoid that in the future. Don't hang out with people that get drunk every night because... Hey, have a beer. Come on. And then you act like a fool. And then your conscience is defiled. And then you're going to have to go find somebody and confess, Wow, I made myself dirty. Help me, please. Oh, brother, okay, let's pray about it. Okay, let's pray about it. Oh, God, reaching in to find that place that's connected to you. And because I feel disconnected from you, I kind of feel dirty. Uh, okay. Get my point? I know it sounds kind of Christian. And it's going to. It's going to sound Christian. It's also going to sound Buddha. 
it's also going to sound Confucius, just wisdom. It might even sound like Muhammad. I don't know. I don't really listen to that voice because all I see is the, the kill, 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 you know, and wild crazy, you know. And uh, I'm not into the wild crazy. But I'm not going to judge those some people that may think that they have to pick up the sword and they're willing to stand in the face of death and demand justice. See, I'm saying this stuff and I'm, I'm just as surprised as you. I hope you're not judging me for it. i am certainly got a r eyebrow raised <laughs> to what I'm saying. And I said something the other night too about being willing to protect my family you know, with a gun if the bad guys are coming to get me, you know? Okay, well, so I should just be willing to walk out into the battlefield and go, oh, God, just protect me in the middle of a... No, no, no. You have to follow with integrity the voice that you hear without fear. Amen.